formula for a line, okay? Salutations and welcome to my presentation on CTE Trends of 2015. My name is Rick Goyette and I currently teach a general construction craft labor program at Providence Career and Technical Academy. It's a pre-apprenticeship pr program for the laborers union. My pedigree, uh, as you may not suspect, is uh, actually computer science. I did the job for a few years and realized I hated it and started my own construction business. I do have a propensity for math, and my CTE trends for 2015 will heavily rely on statistics and data. I apologize to those out there that thought it was just fancy pictures. Uh, let's start off by taking a look at some of the macroscopic trends in CTE, or, or global trends, if you will, although most of the presentation specifically relates to the United States. And then we'll take it down to a microscopic view, if you will, um, getting into some of the nitty gritty things that are happening in some of the CTE classrooms across the country. I do have a love for history as it begins to become more and more ironic that I teach in a CTE area. Let's start by taking a look at some of the historical foundations uh, of CTE that brought us to where we are today. As you can see from this graph, uh, the turn of the century has, us, uh, has a very low high school enrollment rate. It peaks at about the end of the 1960s, beginning of the 1970s. In fact, much of the accomplishments of the 20th century with regard to high school education are, are still about the same. If this graph extended uh, well into 2015, it would look about the same with the equivalent high school enrollment and graduation rates. CTE actually has its roots in the 1960s during a time of extreme political and social upheaval in the United States. Uh, Richard Nixon was actually the one who uh, founded some of the modern day vocational education uh, tenants. Dennis Hersbach from the University of Maryland summarized in, in his paper, uh, the 1970s. The problem with, uh, summarized by Nixon was that youth could not see the relevance of what they were doing in school, resulting in disenchantment, rebellion, and delinquency. The main culprit was the education program that did not prepare students for higher education or the labor market. Career education would change this by making all elements of school focus on careers. Students would help develop more realistic career aspirations and a sense of authority would be restored. Or at least that's what Nixon thought. Now that the United States had solved the problem of graduation from high school, they began to attack uh, college graduation rates as well. Uh, this document demonstrates that the number of college graduates has soared since 1965, with, which may present some evidence that his vocational training and the duality of education was somehow working. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, both, the, both forms of education, both college prep and vocational education, developed uh, side by side in this country however not necessarily equally. In 1983 a Nation at Risk report was published. This report had some interesting things to say especially when you compare it to how we were doing in education uh, in comparison to our historical perspective. It said each generation of Americans has outstripped its parents in education in literacy and economic attainment for the first time in the history of our country the educational skills of one generation will not surpass will not equal and will not even approach those of their parents. Oh no. Sad face. It was definitely time for some change. One report provided some interesting changes from 1982 to 1992 with regard to vocational education. The bulk of the report looks at the relationship between voca vocational and academic course taking. Interesting. Specifically, they began to look at the difference in math, uh, advanced math and advanced science scores for people taking fewer than two vocational credits and more than eight vocational credits. 
The interesting thing about this document that also predates No Child Left Behind is the expressed uh, review of whether or not vocational programs were in fact available to students with disabilities. There's clearly a bias towards vocational education at this point in the uh, review of the educational models currently in America's school system. Um, and they're trying to figure out what's wrong. Uh, I took a look at some research by David Stern, um, a gentleman who um, is from the University of California at Berkeley that's done some extensive research. Let's have a look at the legislation, legislation, legislation uh, during this time. Uh, let's start by looking at 1917. Vocational education is actually described as lesser than college. The terminology in 1988 is that technical education prepares you for a career other than required by, that requires a bachelor's degree or a college degree. In 2006, the language changes again. Vocational is now replaced with career and technical, allowing training to include careers that require a college degree. Hmm. Clearly what we're witnessing here is a, a very uh, steep incline in the evolution of career and technical education with a huge jump from 1998 to 2006. Let's go back to 1969. The Career Academy model was actually invented in Philadelphia. It prepares students for both work and college. In fact, um, this started to spread, but it did not, and not until 1987 when the high schools that work uh, program began to pave the way for the academy model um, and in, in 2010 over 7,000 academy models had been rolled out nationwide uh, pretty much setting the foundation for CTE schools everywhere. The next piece of information is going to be difficult for some to hear. Uh, I looked at another piece of research to really review the career academy model to see if it was if it was something that's aside from the fact that there's 10,000 schools nationwide uh, using it is it here to stay. Academic research uh, indicates that it is. More research from the, the University of California at Berkeley uh, indicates that after th almost 30 years of uh, review, uh, the academy model is a superior uh, concept for CTE schools, providing for both college and career readiness. So here we are. We've brought ourselves uh, from almost 1917 to 2015. Let's have a look at some of the other trends that are impacting CTE. First, students are taking less CTE classes. As you can see from, from this graph, uh, since 2000, about the year 2000, there's been a general decline in CTE course attendance. Interestingly enough, if you're looking for correlations, here's a graph of the manufacturing jobs in the United States, which, which actually also shows a sharp decline in manufacturing jobs uh, since the year 2000. Is it possible that the lack of uh, ability to get a job in a CTE-related field can uh, somehow impact the students that actually take the courses? Hmm, I wonder. It's quite possible that the lack of manufacturing jobs has led some of our students in America to uh, pursue a college career, which may not be very suitable for survival as you look at this graph and see that the unemployment rate has explicably uh, risen, almost tripled, quadrupled in some cases from 2008 until 2012. Clearly that may not have been uh, as intended for some of these students pursuing a higher endeavor. Here's an interesting graph that demonstrates that uh, much to some people's uh, imagination, um, special education students do not uh, attend CTE education at a higher rate than they participate in academic uh, classes. In fact, the only major difference in students choosing CTE over traditional ac academic endeavor is the Asian population with almost um, less than 1% difference um, compared to almost exact data for the other categories. If you really wanted to know what's new, you could head over to the National Center for Education Statistics where their What's New section includes two articles over the past two years uh, for CTE education. Unfortunately, no updates as to this year. Maybe uh, next year's 2016 video will include some updates from them. They did, however, have some interesting information on the breakdown of career uh, academies versus regular schools. From this data, it's, it's very clear that regular schools are dominating the CTE landscape, despite the evidence that CT, the career and technical academies are the superior school reform and provider of both career and academic uh, preparation for our students' future. 
there were almost three times as many CTE teachers at regular schools than there were at uh, career academies. Interesting. I also found it very interesting that the predominant CTE area in the country is the Midwest and the South with almost a 5% difference versus the coasts. Lastly, some of the things that are impacting us in the classroom is the transition or the wild card out there uh, in the educational world of STEM. That stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, the White House recently put together a $170 million proposal uh, to increase STEM funding throughout the United States. Unfortunately, CTE is not included in that, that funding source. It's quite possible that CTE education in America becomes assimilated into some form of a STEM education project. The next trend in CTE happens to be project-based learning. Going back to Richard Nixon's statement that they needed to make education relevant, project-based learning sort of takes some of the fundamentals of CTE and blends them into an academic environment, bringing the, the hands-on experience to the classroom. Uh, and as a benefit to increasing students' 21st century skills. It's a major trend in CTE and in academics nationwide. There can be no mention of trends without mentioning, mentioning the flipped classroom where students watch some sort of audio or visual uh, presentation and come to class ready to have an activity or a discussion. Think about this particular class. If you were to watch this video at home, video at home we could have used the past 12 minutes to discuss trends in CTE. That is a flipped classroom. One last point of note is that academic assimilation into CTE is here and re resistance is futile. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.